Hi there everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, making a video for you guys today in my cabinet, sewing cabinet and table series of videos. Uh, and I wanted to highlight a product uh, or series of products and techniques I've been using for a while. Some of you may be familiar with this or you may not. Uh, one of the things you will find sometimes when you get sewing machine tables uh, or cabinets. The cabinets are simply tables with drawers. I think that's the primary distinction between those two. But whichever you choose to call them, uh, as many of you know from my earlier series, I have a real fondness for these tables uh, in terms of their construction uh, and how, how durable they are in spite of sometimes the rough treatment they get. Now when you're looking for a sewing machine, you may come across a sewing table that is beautiful and pristine. Chances are it's been in someone's home, it may be part of an estate sale, or it could be a downsizing. Maybe someone's wanting to move out of a large home and they're going to be selling off some pieces. But the purpose of today's video is not really to talk about the, the great qualities of the tables, which I have in, in some of the other cabinet videos, but I wanted to share with you some of the things, uh, some of the techniques I use to basically um, uh, refresh and restore uh, or maybe conserve the sewing machine tables that I get when I have them. Now, these tables, uh, as many of you know from my earlier videos, they're all made of wood and they also came with different options for customers to have and they would choose certain other wood types for the veneers. And this particular table started out its existence as a very expensive piece, as I've mentioned in some of the other videos, but unfortunately, over its lifetime, it's had kind of a rough, a rough time of it. It looks like it's got some, some pretty significant scratches. Um, I don't know if you guys can see here, but there's a piece of this uh, veneer missing. This would have been the, this is one of the mahogany tables, so someone paid even extra for that because it was mahogany. And it's got some stuff missing. It's even got, uh, you can see here where the veneer is, is basically pulled away from the base wood of the table. Let me zoom in, you can probably get a better look at it that way. And what you'll see here is that very often um, tables get, get damaged for many different reasons. Sometimes it's because they're being moved, they're being handled roughly. What often happens is that wood, wood has a, a certain resilience to it, a certain flexibility, and as it ages, it can dry out and become somewhat brittle. And that's particularly true of veneers, and particularly when they don't get polished. One of the functions of furniture polish is not just to make furniture uh, to give it a, you know, a sheen and make it glisten, but it actually can feed the wood oils which help keep the wood pliable. I have no idea when the last time uh, it was that this table got um, a good dose of polish, but it looks, it's obvious that it's had, you know, I think when I bought this particular machine and table, it was sitting in a garage. At least it was, you know, covered, I guess you could, you know, look at it that way. Uh, but anyway, the point of this is uh, not to strip. I want to make, make uh, I want to emphasize that. I am not uh, interested in refinishing furniture, stripping it. That is a whole other type of project. Any of you who have ever refinished furniture know what that involves. And my interest is not really to do that. One of my viewers was kind enough to share uh, an idea that maybe instead of using the word restoration, I should think of conservation. Um, to conserve or to, to preserve something that is vintage by stabilizing it. And you know, we definitely want to, to bring this table uh, back, to give it some, some luster once again. And for some people, you know, if you're having to negotiate with, with uh, other members of your household, whether a sewing table should have uh, uh, top billing as a, as a piece of furniture in your home, and, and be given a dedicated space, it can certainly help if the table looks better when you have it in your home. Now, I personally don't mind that because I love old machines. I even display my machines when they're, when they're here in my space. I even keep many of the machines uh, open, uh, partly because I work on them, but also because I enjoy seeing them. But these tables, of course, were designed to hide the machines because when they were new, they were not viewed as 
decorative objects, um, and they were camouflaged inside these tables to hide them, to make, to pretend, quote unquote, that there, this was just a piece of furniture, which, which in many ways it is, uh, could be used for other things than sewing. So, what we're looking at here, let's take a look, and you will see, in addition to the to the missing and, and loose veneers, we've got some, looks like a stain, like a little, um, I don't know what caused this, I don't know if it was a scratch, but it's pretty badly scratched. And I'm going to be trying some products here that I have used before, I'm actually, uh, I'm very familiar with them, but I've never really talked about these in a video. Uh, and this is not a sponsored commercial, this is just me showing a product that I've used. And like anything else, uh, sometimes products, uh, you know, legends and myths begin to surround them when people have good luck with them. And I wanted to talk about this product because of what it allows me to do to my tables without refinishing them. Um, it is not a miracle worker. If you have significant water stains, you can certainly um, make them less noticeable and you can sometimes get rid of them, but there are many techniques for that. What I wanted to show all of you is how you can really improve the appearance of a sewing table, particularly one that has not had a lot of love um, over its recent past. And you can do this very quickly. This is a project that is not, this is not about stripping and sanding. This is um, something that's relatively simple and fast to do. And when you consider how little uh, you know, investment you make, this, this, is, um, this is the pint size, 16 ounces. This is the mahogany color, and they, they offer lots of different colors, I think, and I have a whole collection of them. Uh, I've even done, uh, I recently did the back side of one of my other tables. You are looking at the back end of the white rotary walnut. That's that big heavy table I was telling you all about. I'll be doing a future video on this table because I'm going to be doing a, a particular restoration technique, or I'm going to try it anyway on the top surface because there's, uh, there's quite a bit of varnish or, or, or lacquer missing on part of the top of this table. So the tops of sewing machine tables um, are very often take the, the worst brunt of the wear. Uh, what you typically find is the original owners almost always took great care of these tables and the machines because they were so expensive as I, as I have explained in one of my prior videos on the, on the um, on the pricing of sewing machine tables. But over the years, you know, they get handed down or they get sold off and the new owners, you know, didn't give much for them and so they don't always take the best care of them. Uh, but anyway, you'll see this table again in, uh, in one of my to come videos, one of the uh, future videos I'll be making, because uh, this is gonna take more than one video to talk about um, upgrading the finish of your sewing machine table without having to strip it. So now back to the mahogany Singer table. I forgot to mention this, this table came with a Singer 201 machine. But the product that you're looking at is of course Restore a Finish. It is not a stripper, it is a finish enhancer. And I don't know the actual constituents of this, but it has color similar to a stain, but it also has a uh, it contains oils and I suspect some solvents. And to my knowledge, what it does is it takes soft finishes like um, lacquers and it can soften them just enough to help blend in minor scratches. It is not uh, a cure-all for every blemish on, a, um, on the finish of a piece of furniture. Some of you may have used this for other uh, furniture pieces as well. I'm going to zoom in and let you guys see some of the scratches that I'm dealing with here. And many of you will get uh, tables like this. Uh, again, they can be scratched, they can be gouged. Um, sometimes you'll see rings where people put, people will actually put potted plants on these things and water them when the pots have holes in the bottom. It, you know, just, I, I never really understand why people do this type of thing to wooden furniture. Wood and water do not mix. Now, I will be doing the whole table, but for today, I wanted to really demonstrate to you uh, the, the sort of the contrast of what, th what this will, um, what this is capable of doing. 
and I've been pretty impressed. I don't impress easy with products like this, but I'm going to show this to you. Now, the side that has the veneer missing, I'm going to leave that undone, and the reason is I'm going to be uh, doing a future video on how to repair or replace missing veneer. Now, you don't have to do that. I could, of course, glue down the loose ends of the veneer, which, which is definitely something you want to do. A lot of the damage that happens to veneers will happen because on the very ends of uh, the edges of the veneer of the table, uh, a lot of the dryness and the splitting will, will occur at sort of a microscopic level. And all it takes is the brush of a hand or a sleeve, and it literally will pick. You can see here, there's a little, well, maybe you can't see it. Maybe you could if I would zoom in. Right here, below the can, there's a little place here. And if I wasn't careful, I could literally pull that right up and you see other pieces missing. One approach to this, of course, would be to simply um, uh, re-glue uh, the edges of this down. And then I could take the color of this product and fill it in here and just you know call it a day. And some of you may choose to do that. But and that's why I'm going to make this a separate video on how to um, repair the veneer. It's not nearly as, as tough as you might think. But for today, we're going to take a look at Restore Finish. And then once I'm done with that, I'll put this product. This is called Feed in Wax. It has beeswax. It has citrus oils and some citrus solvents. Both of these products have solvents. And so uh, I'm going to ventilate really well. I have very large... Uh, sliding glass doors and windows. Uh, fans can also be used, but you always want to take precautions anytime you're doing something, uh, a project like this, as many of you know. Um, you can also do this, in, you know, under a carport or garage. It's, you know, we're getting into um, late spring, early summer now. We're in June. <laughs> so uh, it, you, can, you might have some really nice weather outside in order to, uh, to pull off a project like this. One of the things you can use, other than a soft uh, rag or cloth, which I'm going to be using, is you can also use 4 alt or 4 zero very fine steel wool, but you again you've got to approach it carefully. I don't have any of that at the moment, and so I'm going to take this is a little nylon scrubby uh, that I got that I was originally I think it was purchased in like you know the I don't know, the soap cleaner section of a supermarket. I want to note this is not microfiber. This is a plain old-fashioned nylon or plastic um, synthetic scrubby, but it's not microfiber. You want to be very careful. I don't use microfiber products, and I particularly don't use them on furniture or sewing machines because they will, they can literally grind off um, uh, materials like lacquer finishes and paint. So I would highly suggest you not use microfiber products. There are other reasons I don't like them, but for the purposes of this video today, I want to I want to suggest that you avoid them and you don't need them. So what is one of the first things we want to do is we're going to get the top of this table cleaned. Now what I'm taking here, this is a, a just this is like an extra soft Kleenex. So it's very, um, you know, it's not like a paper towel. And the reason I'm using this is I want to be extra careful around the, uh, the very edges of the table. This is true with any furniture and especially with um, sewing machine tables because of the rough life they sometimes lead. Now, one of the things I'm going to do, you can see here, notice how the, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the, the tissue wants to catch on the end of that veneer. And my thinking was, with a, with a tissue like this, hopefully it might tear before the veneer would, but you don't know. So you've got to be extremely cautious on those edges. To make this easier, I'm going to, to start here and push toward the end, right? Like this, not coming this way, because I can, again, pick up edges of that veneer. Because I'm not doing this right side, I'm going to flip it over for the moment. And then we'll flip it back so you guys can see, hopefully, the contrast of what we've got. Now, what I have on the top of this table is dust. Uh, I'm ashamed to say that, but I do. I had something, uh, some things sitting on this. But what I want to do is make sure I get the dust off, okay? And you don't want dust on your table. Uh, 
Another way to remove this, of course, would be to vacuum. If you have a table, like many of us will, that has little grooves and nooks and crannies in it, you're going to want to go ahead and use your uh, vacuum attachment. And don't worry, I'm not going to subject you guys to hearing my vacuum running. But of course, you would want to take uh, something, again, soft, and you'll want to vacuum that piece. That'll, that'll get up. Um, uh, you know, any dust that's hard to reach with something like a tissue. But I'm doing this because I want to be sure that I'm not sealing in dust and dirt because that's going to make your piece of furniture grimy. It'll make it more prone to things like mold. So you don't want to do that. So notice on this edge, this edge is very nice. When I run my finger along this edge, I don't feel anything, um, you know, uh, loose or brittle. It seems very well sealed. I can do this and it's fine. So I'm going to push toward this end because I know this edge, this edge has seen some tough times. You know, it's a little brittle. Um, it's not really flaking or coming off, but I can tell that it's, 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 it's in a more delicate state and you don't want to push it for that reason. Now, uh, next up is we need gloves. I definitely want to keep any, any of this stuff that I'm using um, off of my skin. So I'll put some gloves on here. Uh, very inexpensive and easy to get, obviously. Now, <clears throat> one of the things you're going to want to do, just like uh, if any of you have ever used stain, you know that you know even with paint you have to stir and shake paint. But with something like this, you have to really shake it uh, frequently because the color in this is going to settle to the bottom and, and you really want the color throughout the material. I know that sounds obvious to some people, but there are people who would just open the can and go to town and you, you don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to take off the little blue stopper. And unlike the old metal ones, you can just take this off with, uh, I, I can get it off with my fingers. Now I need uh, my rag. The main thing you want with any rag, again, just use something clean. Make sure it's not dirty. And cotton is going to be a lot more useful than a synthetic. Make sure this is an old piece of a shirt. You don't want buttons on there Ooh. Um, that would scratch your furniture. Uh, and then you can also always go to a, you know, like a paint store department and buy rags if you want. And so what I'm going to do is I'm initially going to take the, the, the soft rag and I'm going to just start wiping and in fact I need to move the camera I really want you guys to see this because I'm not exaggerating when I say uh, this product can really do wonders sometimes when you see commercials you know the, the commercials can be so over the top sometimes and like I said I've used this before and I want you guys to see so I'm going to zoom in because I really I want this to show up on the camera. Whoops. I want this to show up for you all. If you've used this before, you, you know what I'm speaking of. Now watch what happens to the, to the scratches. So many of them are simply going to be filled in in a way that's pretty impressive. And you'll find the best results with the small scratches. Okay, As, as the gouges uh, get deeper and more of the lacquer is gone, when I say lacquer, I'm talking about the clear finish that it was covered with. The wood would have been stained and then coated with lacquer in the factory. And the more lacquer you are missing, the more wood is exposed. And I'll talk about, uh, particularly when I do the other, notice here on the edges, I'm just going to move to the edge this. I don't want to come back against the edge because there's a good chance I could hurt my already delicate veneers. And I don't want to do that because again, I'm not stripping this piece of furniture. I'm basically giving it, giving it a facelift. I mean, that's, that's the best thing I can, the best metaphor I can come up with. So you'll also notice I'm not pouring this product on the, uh, on the furniture itself. I'm actually taking it and putting it on the rag and then applying it. Uh, you don't want to put the liquid directly on here. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but already there's pretty dramatic difference. Um, 
And it's not as if it's you know just wet now when it dries it's going to return to this because this product is feeding the wood a combination of it's almost like it's being fed a little bit of solvent oil and color at the same time so it's not really a stain but then it's also not a uh, it's not a furniture polish either it's it's a little bit of both you can see this I'm going to zoom in and let you guys see one of the things that this stuff does and then I'll talk about that big gash there and and but notice what's happening here okay now this space here where you see that you still see the mark it's being feathered in a little bit but unlike the small scratches you know it's still there and what that tells me is that a lot, a very large portion at least, of the lacquer was filled in, or excuse me, was removed when this piece was scratched. Now, this is where things like steel wool, or in this case, um, the, the company that makes this product recommends steel wool. And I'm going to try, again, anytime you do this, you've got to, oops, I've even dripped some onto the table here. Um, the, the, you know, I'm trying this, again, this is with a uh, nylon scrubby, and what I'm doing is I'm taking this, and you've got to experiment, guys, because the, the lacquer or the clear finish on your tables may be different than this. Um, and so you really have to, to always test your own area before you go to town on something and find out that you know, it's, it's, it's creating a, a look that you don't like. You don't really want that to happen. So if you have the steel wool, that works even better. And what that's going to do, it's going to lightly, you want to, you're lightly scuffing the clear, um, clear lacquer finish in the hopes that you're going to feather in some of that, some of that uh, area there. And I want to make sure, again, I don't pull back to the left and, and upset my, my tired and weary veneers. Now... I could potentially go back over this again, but you can see I'm trying to get this feathered in in a way where you don't see as much of the, the scratch. Now again, I'm not trying to get this to look exactly like it did in the factory when it came out of the factory. The only way I could do that is to, uh, to strip it, and I don't want to do that. I, I don't mind, and you guys know this from seeing the way I talk about the machines, I don't mind a little bit of patina on, on something. I think that's part of the history of its use, but we definitely want to clean this up a bit. Now, according to the directions, when you apply this product, you then want to go back. I'll find a clean side of my rack here, if there is one. Um, and then you're going to go back and remove any excess, okay? Because you're not simply going to leave this. You could, but I think they suggest that you remove it. Now, that is dramatically different. And it looks more reddish like mahogany than it's really showing up on the, on the camera. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to pull over the other side so you guys can now see the difference. And that's pretty darn dramatic, right? That's, you know, I, I'm, I'm impressed with what I did, uh, not what I did, what the product did in such a small amount of time. Now, you still see the ghost mark of this scratch, but it's not, it's not as severe. I could take uh, steel wool and I could go over this a bit more and probably get it to, to uh, you know, to camouflage more, but it looks so much better. And again, the reason I'm not doing this side yet is because I want to repair the veneers here. And then I'm going to actually make an attempt anyway to replace a piece of veneer that's missing. Um, I found a veneer kit in a, in a store, a company called Lee, Lee Valley Tools, and it was very inexpensive. So I'm going to be doing that. I'll do that in a different video. But if you look at this, you can see, I'm going to lower the camera here and see if we can get this to come down a little bit. And you know, again, it has a sheen. We haven't used the feed wax yet. The feed wax doesn't really change the color, but because 
because this product is not an actual um, it's not an actual uh, polish. Uh, again, you saw me, I'm taking the, the, the clean area of my rag and I want to sort of remove any of the excess of this, of this restore finished product that I've just applied. By the way, if you have any areas, I don't really see any on the top here. Sometimes you'll have tables and, and people have literally used it as a workbench and you'll sometimes see uh, latex or water-based acrylic paints, usually house paints, and sometimes they've gotten splattered or they've even spilled. <clears throat> but you can actually, with steel wool and the Restore Finish product, you can actually get some of that off if you're patient. Uh, again, this is something that took me very little time. You know, just I just made sure it was clean. And, uh, and that's what it accomplished. I, you know, that's not too shabby. Now, to give you another follow-up to that, I'm going to take the feed and wax. Now the feed and wax is oh, part of the part of the lid. The feed and wax is is it's not a liquid and it's not a paste. It's almost got the consistency of <clears throat> uh, gosh, I don't even know what to call it. It's almost uh, it's the consistency of of uh, it's it's more liquid than a paste if you will. <clears throat> now I'm going to take another rag here. And again, you don't have to use new rags. You can use old ones. Just make sure they're, they're clean. And what the feed and wax does, the feed and wax is very important. And I used both products. I used the walnut version of the Restore Finish and the feed and wax on the back side of that white rotary table I was showing you. And now when I take the feed and wax, again, I'm putting it on... A, uh, a rag. Let's change the angle here just a bit. And what I'm going to do is just apply it. And what that does, I don't really want to get it on this other end. Let's put that back. What this is doing is it's doing what furniture polishes often do. Uh, po furniture polish is not just about giving furniture sheen. It should feed the wood um, oils, which which give it um, sort of, it's kind of like when you're putting uh, moisturizer on your skin, if, if I could use that metaphor. Uh, now this applies to finishes uh, that are lacquer based, perhaps shellac based. If you have more modern furniture, um, <clears throat> such as polyurethane finishes, this may not apply because those are a different uh, chemical base. But all the vintage tables are either lacquer, which most of them are, and occasionally some of them were finished with shellac, which has a different, <clears throat> excuse me, a different uh, chemical makeup. So, that there you go, guys. That is a pretty stark contrast between what just took me very little time. I think making the video is taking longer than it would have taken me to simply to do this. Um, and once you've done it, again, you can always, you know, periodically put the feed and wax on it. I don't know how often you would need to do it. It really, it really depends. But that's, that's incredible. And you, you can see the other side here. And once I finish making the repair to the veneer, um, I will go ahead and use the same products to get the other half to look the same. Uh, here, you know, I've got a piece of veneer missing here. I've got this huge piece here. And I'm going to have to, I'll be doing this for the first time, so you guys will be able to watch me, and you'll either, you'll either be impressed or you will laugh yourself onto the floor, and it'll be a comic video. But in any case, I'm going to give it a try. And uh, for those of you who are not interested in veneer replacement, you think, well, hey, I'm, I'm not really wanting to go that far. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, though, because before I can replace uh, any veneer, the first thing I have to do is stabilize what's here. So any veneer that has, that's popping off, that's coming loose, I need to tack that down, and you need to do that as well. If you have a table that's like this, if the veneer is solid and, it, and it's not lifting, then you're good to go. But many of you will have this same issue. You can see it moving as I press down. This has to be stabilized. If you don't, it's going to get worse because inevitably some, you or someone is going to come across it and it's going to pull off, and that would be a shame. So. Anyway, stay tuned, guys, for uh, future videos. 
again, this product has its limits, but you know, I think I was at $16 for the restore finish and $16 for the feed and wax. This stuff goes a long way when I have used it. Uh, I've had cans that I've used for years. And so, and I have many colors. I have the mahogany and the walnut. They make the walnut, dark walnut, cherry, oak, maple. But uh, I'll be doing another video as well for the, for the white rotary table. And in that situation, I've got uh, more water damage that I'm going to try to remedy before I put this product uh, onto that table. I've got another trick I'm going to try, so stay tuned for that. I really appreciate all of you watching. Uh, the channel is almost about to hit 498,000 views, which is just hard for me to believe. But uh, if you all have furniture of your own, maybe you have a sewing table or cabinet that you would really like to, to make presentable so it would have a respectable appearance in your home, uh, make comments down below or maybe you've used this product before. Let me know what you thought about it and any of the challenges or rewards that you have, that you have come across by using it. But again, the idea here is to, to uh, stabilize and preserve what we have. It's not about stripping down to the bare wood and trying to you know, restain it and revarnish it. That is an entirely other universe. Uh, and, and again, this, this technique and approach to tables is it really is uh, in the same spirit that I approach my machines, right? I don't strip and spray paint my machines. Uh, that's not what I'm interested in. It's not what my, my clients want. When they pay for a machine, they want to know that it's been overhauled, that, that I've gone through all of its mechanicals, that I have cleaned it. And you guys know that with the sewing machines, I simply buff those with sewing machine oils. Uh, I will have a video coming up soon where I'm actually going to do some paint touch up on the machine, something I do not do often, and I'll explain that in the upcoming video on the little Necky VCJ. But for today, I uh, just wanted to show this product to you if you have never seen it or used it. The easiest place to get it, I think I'm pretty sure you can order it online, but I like to, uh, I like to frequent you know, small local businesses and most antique stores or vintage shops they often carry this product because people will go into the store and say, gosh, that's a nice table, but you know, it's kind of rough. Uh, otherwise I would buy it. And of course the stores can sell products like this to show how easy this is. But this, uh, this really brings out some of the richness of, in this case, that mahogany veneer. And uh, so anyway, uh, next videos, we'll be talking about how to stabilize and ultimately repair veneer and uh, if you choose not to do that, you can also simply color in this little spot here. There are ways to do that to kind of hide the gap, uh, camouflage it a bit. Hope this was helpful, folks. Uh, and stay tuned for the next videos. I've got more cabinet series videos coming, along with other videos that I'm trying to get scheduled. But so appreciate you watching. And if you have any comments, just share them below. Thank you.